we Indians do not believe in one version of anything, be it Modakas or stories. Hello friends, welcome to the fantastic world of stories and why we tell them from Culture Katha. Ganesha or Gannu as we lovingly call him here in Maharashtra is a favorite god to many of us. And if there's one thing that's very striking about the elephant god, that is his broken tusk. You must have observed this in the deities, idol sculptures and paintings. Now, there have been several stories that have tried to explain why the god is single tusked. The most famous one, of course, being the one where Ganesha is said to have broken his tusk to write the Mahabharata. Although that story is believed to be a later addition to the epic, it does two important things. One, it gives divine sanction to the written text of an epic that remained largely in the oral tradition for a very long time. The other thing the story does is, of course, to explain the missing or broken tusk of Lord Ganesha. The Brahmanda Purana narrates a different story. Once, after sage Parashurama had destroyed the Kshatriyas with the Parashu that Lord Shiva had given him, he went to Mount Kailasha to offer his thanks to Lord Shiva. But he was stopped at the gate by Ganesha, who told the sage that Shiva and Parvati were engaged in a deep conversation and that they could not be disturbed. Not wanting to be stopped by a gatekeeper, an angry Parashurama hurled his Parashu at Ganesha. Now, Ganesha could have easily resisted the attack by Parashurama, but chose not to because it was his father's powerful weapon he was facing. Ganesha did not want the weapon's power to be undermined by his resistance. So, he chose to take Parashurama's blow on his left tusk. And that is how he ended up with a broken tusk, says the Purana. Note how the story balances the power equations between Ganesha and Shiva. It upholds Ganesha as a mighty deity who could have easily tackled Shiva's weapon, but chooses not to. At the same time, it is careful not to undermine Shiva's superior status among the gods. The story establishes Ganesha as a powerful, yet subservient son of Shiva and in one stroke brings the devotees of both the deities together. And that, my dear friends, is the power of stories. Quite different from the previous two stories is a cute tale that also attempts to explain Ganesha's broken tusk. It so happened that on one Ganesh Chaturthi, Ganesha, after visiting the homes of all his devotees, ended up eating lots and lots of modakams. He ate so many modakams that his stomach became bloated and extremely heavy. No wonder then that Mushika, his Vahana, found it difficult to carry Ganesha. Even his poor Mushika struggled to carry him. A snake suddenly happened to cross his path. Shocked to see his predator up so close, Mushika promptly jumped in fright and in the process overthrew Ganesha, who was sitting on his back. As poor Ganesha fell down from his Vahana, his stomach that was already filled with the Modakams split wide open and all of the Modakams fell out. Now seeing the rather funny flight of Ganesha from his place up in the sky, Chandra the moon laughed out aloud at the god. Now this angered Ganesha. Angered by Chandra's ridicule, Ganesha plucked out one of his tusks and threw it at him. The tusk hit the moon and the moon at once lost all his luster and started to diminish in size and glow every day. See what the story is doing here. It's tying up a natural phenomenon that is the waning phase of the moon with the missing or broken tusk of Ganesha. We find two different phenomena being explained using the story. Such stories are called etiological tales. Friends, hope you enjoyed listening to the stories. Let me know which of the three stories you enjoyed most and do share any that you know too. So till we meet again or yet another bunch of stories, it's Tata Baba, take care and a very very happy Ganesh Chaturthi to you all. Shri Mangal Muti Darshan Matri Manakama